possible nursing shortage in Vermont. The state has invested tens of millions of dollars to attract, teach, and keep new nurses here. But a report by the state auditor's office says it's not clear if our investments are paying off. Our Laura Ullman investigates, are we filling the gap or digging a deeper hole? I grew up in Burlington and family of five and Burlington North End. Mm -hmm. um, we all went to UVM, my siblings, all five of us, plus my mom had gone to UVM. Lynn Kiernan has been a nurse in Vermont for 39 years. But before she started practicing, she was eager to see new places. That stage didn't last very long. I thought I just want to get back into Vermont so I don't miss out on holidays and family functions and seeing my nieces and nephews grow up. Family. It was a guiding force for Kiernan, as it is for so many. Vermont's aging population makes a story like hers rare. The state is trying to combat the decline of nurses by investing almost $8 million in student loan forgiveness and scholarship. Students, professional or otherwise, experience Vermont through their education. Then they learn about the state, they make friends, they put down roots, however shallow at the outset and are more likely to stay. Many do. The Green Mountain Care Board's Workforce Development Plan rests on this ideology. Provide financial incentives to learn, apprentice, and work in Vermont, and nurses will come and stay here. The caveat is many students that receive the incentives are only required to stay for a year. That struck me as odd because, as you know, you know, going through the educational track and becoming certified as an RN is a significant change in your professional life. State Auditor Doug Hopper's report found that of the more than $20 million that had been allocated for workforce development, a little over 10% of it had actually been spent. The report also found that there's no performance measures to see if nurses are actually staying or why they're leaving. So what we have are a bunch of programs that are not well coordinated. Uh, they're not consistent. Uh, they don't reflect what's going on at the hospital. COVID caused a mass exodus of nurses from practice, and staffing was down even before that. To make up for the loss, the University of Vermont's Health Network budgeted $350 million for traveling staff in the past three years. That's double the amount it cost to pay for nurses in state. My view was, gosh, if, if they can contribute to a solution by spending a portion of the savings, by having regular nurses come through the system, and that's a good investment on their part. Hopper suggests more work needs to be done to standardize and increase service obligation. Nurses, new graduates can come to Vermont, uh, be in Vermont, and they can get pretty much their top choice of where they want to work. Hoffer says some of these incentives come from ARPA funds and time is running out to spend it. And right now, there's no plan for the state to replace those funds. You know, you're not going to do much to solve a generation long problem if you only do these programs for a couple of years. So, you know, this is up to the governor, this one and his successor and legislative leaders to, to decide how important this is to them. One of the most important recommendations Doug Hoffer made from his report is that Vermont needs to do a better job of keeping track of whether or not these incentives are working with more data. Reporting in Northfield, I'm Laura Ullman, Channel 3 News.